G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Um, today I'm doing another update on the progress of the seahorse. I think this is update number number eight, I think it is now. Um, so, a lot of progress since I last filled you guys in. Uh, most excitingly, I think I've finished I finished weathering the hull to a point where I'm ready to start putting all the sub-assemblies together, which is pretty exciting. So I did uh, a lot of dot filters with oils and a lot of weathering and I'm pretty happy with it. There's still stuff to, to paint like the inside of that control section there but um, overall yeah it's ready to start putting stuff into which is exciting. The other elements are getting closer to being ready as well. Um, this piece here I decided I needed a little something I wasn't so happy with the weathering just here with the massive chunks of rust taken out there. I just felt it was a bit too overscale for that section, so I thought well, it would be nice to have an additional panel that looks like it's been scavenged from somewhere and bolted on, so I'm going to put that there. But yeah, pretty happy with this piece. Let's get some focus. I feel like that's come up really nicely. Um, the other pieces I have, the communications mast, I need to do a little bit more wiring of that, but it's pretty close to finished. There's some subtle weathering on that. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it quite so well on the video. Oh yeah, you can see some of the chipping and stains and things. There, quite a lot of chipping and mess on the deck floor. The door and the sort of wheelhouse I'm really happy with. Quite a lot of subtle weathering there. Again, not sure you can really pick it all up. Oh yeah. Yeah, I feel, feel it's in a good place. Um, I'm particularly happy with this kind of rudder thing here. Let's get it in some light. I feel like the weathering of that has come come along really well. Um, so now it's time to start putting stuff together. I've got my engine section that was made out of an old Nerf gun, and you know, a bit of rust, a bit of dry brushing with metals over a, a metallic paint over a black surface. I feel like that's looking suitably industrial. So I'm going to try and cram it into the space that's available and see how it looks. I'm a tiny bit worried that, um, that this area just here might look a bit fake, that O3. It just feels a bit yeah, to me. A bit too maybe juvenile, a bit too obviously not what you would have on an engine. Yeah, that's concerning me a little bit. So I might try and make something for that, that will cover that up off to the drawing board. Let me see what I can come up with. Uh, so I've decided that I'm going to make a little kind of panel to go over the worst of the O3 and have some wires coming out from beneath it. Sort of like, I don't know, a weird distributor cap. So I've got some spare bits of styrene here, some bits of wire that were left over. I was actually making a little access hatch for on the decking, which I think will work nicely. A bit of shadow helps to see that a bit easier. So yeah, it'll be something similar-ish to that, which will go just there with bits of wire coming out from beneath it. A bit more technical detail. Should look good, hopefully. Well, slightly depressingly, I've realised that I'm going to have to repaint these two yellow hydraulic arms because they just don't feel right to me. Um, yeah, when I look at them, it's just too many colours happening there, too much happening. Um, particularly when I add this bit of yellow up here, the blues, the reds, the yellows, it's just... Uh, I'm not loving it. Um, they feel a bit too bright and too garish and too out of place, you wouldn't have something yellow hydraulic painted there. Um, to give you an idea of what they're going to look like, this piece, this sort of big aerial rudder thing is going there, and it just, it doesn't feel right. Why would you have those painted yellow? It doesn't feel right to me. They need to be grungy and blue and dirty. Which is annoying as hell, because uh, I really, really liked 
some of the scratches on these bad boys. I did a video on these a long time ago. This was my how to paint weld seams video. And let's try and get some focus. Yeah, there's just some really nice scratches on them. So that's a bit depressing. But, you know, I'd rather it look real than stick to my guns just for the sake of it not being changed. So, I'm going to spray paint those. Poo. Anyway, I um, haven't quite connected this piece yet, as you can see. Yeah, the, the construction of this whole thing has just, I don't know, worried me from the start of how to actually make everything connect inside. Um, I've got these two big rods that you can see that will hold everything. They're the only really secure bits. I don't really trust gluing stuff to the inside. Still got to cram this baby in there somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Feeling a bit disheartened today. Poo. Mainly because of these little yellow buggers. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Here I am painting over all that painstakingly applied yellow scratched stuff with some cruddy brown. I have to redo all the scratches again, all the chipping again, and paint blue over the top. Every single brush stroke is killing me. Bugger! A little while back I made myself a list of all the things that I still had to do for the seahorse. And we're getting there. There's a lot still to do. I think we're at about point four and a half maybe. We're getting there. <laughs> slowly, slowly. So I've just attached, oh this is from a while back, I've just attached this brass burner from an old stove to my bottom engine. I've used some wire. It's, it's far from the most elegant solution, but I don't think it's going to be very visible in the final result. And it will hold it on because I was really struggling to think what's going to hold this quite heavy piece on to. The glue wouldn't really work, if gluing it to plastic. So I think that will work. I hope that will work. In the meantime, my rusty brown has dried. I'll hairspray that. Painted those cords that I applied the other day. So that's added a lot more detail around this area, which was previously lacking detail. Pretty happy with that. Ha! <sighs> We're getting there. I'm feeling stressed about it, which is ridiculous because you know I'm trying to make a deadline for a model show. Screw the model show, it's not that important. You know, I've been working on this for seven months. I want to not rush the last you know few weeks of it. Um, but I also will be a bit gutted if I don't make it in time. Pshh! But not that gutted. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, stop talking. Keep building. Go, go, go! Right now, I'm busy trying to get all the pieces inside the hull. So I've got my engine in down the bottom, that's gone up through the bottom, and now I'm trying to get the piece that fits in the window here in. I've uh, already had to snap one of the arms off <laughs> because it just wouldn't go in through the top. This is an absolute bastard. This is the bit I was always kind of dreading, was just trying to get these main components in. And uh, dreading with good measure. So this one now uh, won't turn around. I'm going to have to snap the other arm off, which just this arm won't clear the inside there, the brown arm. So I'm going to have to snap that off as well, which I'm not too thrilled about. This one came off pretty cleanly. I'm going to be able to put that back on fairly easily, but uh, yeah, not my best planning ever. All right, I'm just going to snap it off. Oh, I hate doing this. Oh, after all that work, it's killing me. Oh, I got it, I got it. Oh, but now the top's not going to go in. swear but I'm keeping it nice because of the camera but <laughs> all right I'm gonna turn this off before I swear 
you will either see in a few minutes a snapped off arm or not. We will see. I'm going to start swearing now. I got it! Managed to get it out without breaking the arm off. <sighs> Phew. So now I'm just going to stick this one back on. And of course, spray paint them, hairspray them, etc. But yeah, that's, that's good. Here's, here's parts of it coming together. There's the engine poking out down the bottom. Obviously need to secure it all, but uh, I did try and design it so that it would all kind of hold itself in place. I'm not going to tip it upside down until I have properly glued it, but yeah, that's quite exciting to have gotten a bit of it together. It's good. Whew. I can stop swearing. So I have glued the bottom engine in place. You can just kind of see in here, you can see one of these little sort of platforms that I built. And I've, so there are platforms coming out from the engine, platforms coming in from the hull, and the two, the grey and the white ones, are both touching, and I've glued those. Poured on quite a lot of CA glue. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I really don't want to play around with it while it's drying. So I'm busy stringing up the cable on my crane. Let's get a bit of focus. So, comes from a spool down the bottom, goes through that, up, over, and uh, here's my hook. Nice and rusty. I'm using my homemade rust, which is great. I love the stuff. Uh, I've also glooped some of it onto this spindle thing here and it's just the best. If you've never checked out my tutorial on how to make your own rust, it's real rust, um, check it out. Just search on my YouTube channel. It's really good stuff. And I think I'm going to call it a night there because I don't want to stuff anything up in a rush. So I'm going to let that glue cure properly. I'm going to let this glue cure properly and just walk away and not think about the broken off arm. That's good night for now. Right, now comes the scary bit. So, I've glued a whole bunch of stuff inside. I've got way down the bottom there, I've got a little piece for this to go in. So I'm going to slide it in that way, turn it around and it should lock. That's the plan for that one. And that's the piece that comes out through that little bit down the bottom there, that little sort of flange. Flange. <clears throat> Next, I've glued in this whole side engine here, so that is finally in place, Ooh, in focus, maybe not, finally in focus, finally in place, I'm finally happy with that, finally, it's taken a long time. These two arms are repainted, every step of that killed me, and they are ready. Once it's all ready to go, I'm going to install this piece on those two arms. So, the big question now is... How will I go installing this onto the base? Now, I'm going to grab the base because it's nowhere nearby. It's been that long since I worked on it. Okay, here is the base with its two bits of wire wobbling around. So the base, I did this about seven months ago. I think I did this in about October 2017. It's now May 2018. Um, it has a C base that I produced. Uh, I have a video demonstration on how to achieve that yourself. Yeah, when I look at it now, after seven months, I'm happy. And it has these two bits of wire coming out of it that I intend to have as like a... I intend to have this floating up here and those bits of wire draping down like it's a cord dangling down from the hull. You know, just something sloppy left over the edge dangling in the water. So I need to get them draped nicely because at the moment they just go bang, poke straight up. I need to drape them nicely like they're you know, being dragged into the water and somehow install them onto my two cross members and then once that sunset are going to come up over the edge of the hull 
somehow install them nice and strongly on the cross members and then put a base over the top of it, put the deck over the top. It's going to be really tricky. This is probably the part of it that I've most been nervous about. So, wish me luck. I could swear a lot here. Okay, I've done one. Comes up there. Look at the mess behind, my goodness. Comes up. Goes over the railing. Comes down, and then hopefully it's going to go under the deck. Comes up. Goes over the railing, goes under the deck. That's the plan. Number two. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So, as you guys know, I try not to swear in my videos, but the wires don't take the weight of the hull. Shit. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Far out. Shit, shit, shit. Um. That's what I wanted. Roughly. And... That's what happens when I don't take the weight of it. Far out. <sighs> Shit. Hmm, well. <clears throat> I've thought about this for about 24 hours. It's the next evening. And... I don't know what the answer is. Uh, the only three things I can think of are either trying to spline or weave more wires around those, so similar to what I've done in a previous video where I've made tow cables for tanks, and that would make it, if I did an extra wire, twice as strong, or three wires, three times as strong, and the sort of tow cable weaved braid of the wire could look really cool, getting a bit chunky, but it could look cool, but I expect it's a bit of a bastard to try and make it work. Second option is I just cut my losses, snip, snip, and get some more thick wire from the hardware store and see if that works. Third option is I keep it as is and just buy a nasty piece of acrylic rod to go in the bottom, clear perspex rod. I don't want to do that, I think that would look horrible. Um, the only other thought I have, and this is a bit of a bit of a dark sheep here, uh, is to or a bit of a dark horse, sorry, is to try and get a magnet, so maybe a disc magnet that could go underneath the base, and then another magnet that could go up inside the metal ring. And if they repelled each other, maybe that would be enough to keep it, you know, levitating, and the wires could keep it in place, the thin wires could keep it in place. I don't know if any of those will work, so I am very open to suggestion. If any of you guys have any good suggestions for how I can make this actually work, I am very, very open. I'm a bit gutted by this. I had way, way back, like we're talking five months ago, I had someone give me, uh, send an email in a, uh, sorry, a YouTube comment where they said, oh, I'm not sure that's going to take the weight, and I blithely responded, no, no, I'll be fine, no problems. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, they were right, so whoever that was, props to you, because you were right and I was wrong. The only other thing I can think of, so I've got two of these, the only other thing I can think of is to put a second one of them, uh, is to remove this from down the bottom there, but I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference. This is about 120 grams, the whole thing is about 150 grams, I think it was, so maybe, I don't know. So look, anyone got any suggestions, please chime in. I'm just going to weigh this now, because I did that last night when I perhaps wasn't in a very good headspace. Got a little micro scale here, 120 grams for this little guy. I don't know what that is in ounces. Uh, Four point two ounces. So look, it's it's heavy, and the whole thing was about one hundred and fifty, I think it was. Um, I don't know what the answer is. So please, any suggestions? 
I am all ears, guys. This is Dave, signing off in a fairly dispirited mood. Uh, until next time, please, save me!